Laura Fry, Senior Curator and Curator of Art at Gilcrease Museum. And today I'd like to discuss one of the strangest paintings in the Gilcrease collection, The Wolf Charmer by John Lafarge. Now, when I first began working at Gilcrease in 2015, this was not a work I expected to find in the Gilcrease collection. And I distinctly remember doing some research in the painting vaults and coming across this six foot tall painting. It was lurking in a dark corner. And I remember being just shocked and wondering like, what is this John Lafarge painting doing here? So John Lafarge was a well-known 19th century artist who worked with many different media. He was a painter, a muralist, printmaker, furniture designer, and also worked in stained glass. And uh, his stained glass is perhaps his most famous media. Uh, and the, the panels are just beautiful. His stained glass work just has these lovely flowing lines, spectacular colors, and it's really different from this dark oil on canvas painting. So what's going on here? Well, early in his career, in the 1860s, John Lafarge created a series of illustrations for a children's magazine. These were all European folk tales that were also inspired by uh, figures from Japanese illustrations, so kind of combining styles. And 40 years later, when he was 71 years old, he took one of these illustrations and worked that composition into this large scale painting. The painting shows this hunched ghostly figure playing bagpipes and leading a pack of wolves. And though the wolves have bristling fur, they're snarling, and the, the figure's face is rather elongated and his bare foot is kind of stumpy and paw-like. It's almost like this person is transforming into a wolf himself. Lafarge said that this image was based on folk tales from Northern France and from Spain. And the folk tales described a magical piper who had the power to control wolves. And these tales uh, led to the legend of werewolves. And Lafarge really saw this painting as one of the most important works of his career uh, because of the psychological implications. He really saw this as exploring the psychological connection between humans and the animal world. The wolf charmer caused an absolute sensation when it was first displayed in New York City in 1906, and it was purchased by the St. Louis Art Museum. Throughout the early 20th century, this work was exhibited all over the United States and Europe. It was really popular. But by the 1940s, modernism and abstraction were much more in vogue, and the St. Louis Art Museum sold the Wolf Charmer in 1945 for a mere pittance. This presented an opportunity for Mr. Thomas Gilcrease. He soon purchased the painting to add to his collection. And today, Gilcrease Museum is probably best known for paintings of the American West. But Mr. Gilcrease's vision was much bigger than this. Thomas Gilcrease was really seeking top examples of historical American artworks from all across the United States. And he was seeking a really wide variety of artists and styles and time periods in this really expansive idea of representing American art. So Mr. Gilcrease proudly displayed the Wolf Charmer in Gilcrease Museum in the 1950s and 60s. But after his death in 1962, the painting was largely forgotten. Today's scholars of John Lafarge are familiar with this painting, but they thought it had been lost. Until I contacted one John Lafarge scholar, she had no idea the work was at Gilcrease Museum. So I'm happy to say that we've begun to bring this painting back to light. The frame and the painting itself were both recently conserved, and we're now able to share this work with many other rediscovered treasures in the Gilcrease online collections at gilcrease.org. So please come by for a visit uh, and take a look at the online collections while we remain closed to the public. Thank you.